The first day's fighting during the Battle of Gettysburg was a successful beginning for Confederate General Robert E. Lee's invasion of the North. However, it was also a deadly beginning for the bloodiest battle of the American Civil War. After the Battle of Chancellorsville in May of 1863, victorious General Robert E. Lee, commander of the Confederate Army of Northern Virginia, decides to invade the North. By this, Lee hopes to take pressure off of Virginia, which has suffered heavily in the past years of ravage fighting. Meanwhile, General Joseph Hooker, commander of the Union Army of the Potomac, begins to pursue. While marching north, the Union Army separates the Confederate cavalry under General Jeb Stuart from the main Confederate column. Due to this, Lee is now blind to the movements of the enemy. During this time in Washington, D.C., President Abraham Lincoln is tired of Hooker's constant fear of Lee. Thus, on June 28, Lincoln removes Hooker and appoints General George G. Meade as commander of the Union Army of the Potomac. Meade at first does not want the command. Even so, he pushes the Union Army forward in an attempt to catch the Confederate Army. A few days later, Lee receives word that the Union Army is in pursuit. He then decides to concentrate his army at Gettysburg. Thus, on the night of June 30, as the lead elements of A.P. Hill's division under General Harry Heath are advancing towards Gettysburg, they notice a small group of blue soldiers on a ridge outside the town. Believing them to be nothing but local militia, General Heath, on the morning of July 1st, advances his division towards Gettysburg to drive the blue troops back. However, as Heath's division moves forward, it runs into a strong line of Union cavalry under the command of General John Buford. Buford had arrived the day before, and noticing the strategic value of the hill surrounding Gettysburg, had placed his men in a defensive position northwest of town. Aim. Heath's initial assault is driven back with heavy losses. However, the Confederates reform and attack again, slowly driving the Union cavalry back. Ready. Aim. Fire. Reload. By 10 a.m., Buford's cavalry is near the breaking point. Then, just in the nick of time, the Union First Corps under General John F. Reynolds arrives and reinforces the beleaguered Union cavalry. However, as Reynolds is leading part of his corps forward, he is shot in the back of the head and dies almost instantly. Reynolds is replaced by General Abner Doubleday, who completes the positioning of the First Corps, just as the Ready. Confederates attack again. Dang. Fire. Reload. Ready. Throughout the morning, Confederate troops launched several more assaults on the Union line, slowly driving it back. At about noon, the fighting takes a small break as both sides bring in reinforcements. The Union reinforcements come in the form of the 11th Corps under General Oliver O. Howard, who positions his men north of Gettysburg. These men receive an attack from advancing Confederates under General Richard S. Ewell. Fire. 
Reload. Come to the shoulder. Ready. Aim. Fire. Turn reload. Aim. Fire. Good. Fall back. Both sides fight ferociously over the course of the next several hours, but by 4 p.m., the Union 11th Corps, which is outnumbered and outflanked, breaks and retreats through the streets of Gettysburg with the rebels in hot pursuit. Fire. The First Corps holds a little longer, but soon comes to the same fate while suffering even more casualties. The Union troops reform on Cemetery Hill, where General Winfield S. Hancock is ordered by Meade to take command and hold a defensive position until the rest of the Union Army can arrive. General Lee urges an attack on Cemetery Hill, but the Confederate troops are exhausted and low on ammunition. Thus, no attacks are made on the Union position. That night, Meade arrives, and by the morning of July 2nd, the Union Army has five corps in position, with two more on the way. During this time, the Confederate Army brings up its own reinforcements and plans an attack on the 2nd. July 1st was one of the bloodiest days of the Civil War, with the Union forces losing about 9,000 men, 50% of their men engaged. The Confederate forces lose about 7,000 men. Despite these tremendous losses, the fighting at Gettysburg was far from over.